Hey guys, welcome back to Razor RC. Uh, I thought I'd shoot a quick little video today talking about shock mounting positions and what uh, it actually does. Um, there's actually other videos out there, other material and books and uh, websites and stuff like that. I'm kind of trying to explain this. I never really felt like um, it was explained all that well. I wasn't too happy with kind of what you could read and see and, and view out there. So I thought I'd shoot my own little video talking about shock mounting locations and uh, actually what they actually do when you move them in or out a hole. And so in front of us, we got my TLR 22T uh, 3.0. Uh, this is the rear end. I've got one shock on there and obviously one shock uh, removed. And so what I wanted to talk about is uh, basically what is actually going on when you move the shocks around. And so uh, at its heart, you know, sort of at its basics, um, you'll see that basically this arm and this shock tower basically form like uh, a nice little triangle with the, the, the hinge pin or the pivot point. So you basically got one arm here and you basically have one arm here. Never mind that it kind of curves around and stuff. It basically just acts as a single uh, two points here uh, with the hinge pin and the shock tower. And so basically what you have going on is basically a simple mechanical lever. Right, and just like a nutcracker or one of those little seafood uh, clamps that you use to break open crab legs and stuff. All it is is just a simple lever with a, a, a pivot point, which is also called a fulcrum in the case of a lever, and then basically two arms that are uh, moving towards each other. Now, whether the arm actually moves up towards the shock tire, like when you're landing a jump, or whether the shock tire is actually rolling over and moving towards the arm, like uh, in the middle of a corner, right, as your, as your vehicle rolls, it doesn't matter. It's, it's basically just two arms of this mechanical lever uh, getting closer to each other, you know. So some people talk about like vertical forces and horizontal forces and how they're somehow different. I, I don't think any of that actually makes a difference. These are just two arms moving towards each other. And what's in between them is basically a shock that's basically being compressed, right? So uh, if you remember back to your mechanical levers, this thing in the middle is called the fulcrum or the pivot point. And, uh, and the way it works is that the longer the arm is, you know, either this arm or this arm, as you squeeze them together, it basically is like a force multiplier. And so you, you might, you know, squeeze them with a certain amount of force, but whatever's being here in the middle, like a nut or something that you're, you're actually squeezing between the two levers is actually getting cracked, right? You're, you're applying a, a multiplier and, make, and crushing that uh, little nut there <laughs> in the middle. And that's basically how a nutcracker works, right? So uh, how do, what does this have to do with shocks and shock locations? Well, the, there's basically two rules and sort of two things at play when you move a shock around. So the first is uh, if you move the shock closer to the fulcrum, right? If you just get it closer to here, uh, basically it's going to feel softer because it's not going to be able to resist uh, this, these arms and, and the shock terror quite as well, right? It's it's not gonna be able, it's got a little spring that's providing some force, but it's not gonna be able to push back against this, these arms quite as well. Now, obviously if you move it out and further away from the fulcrum, it's actually gonna feel a little bit stiffer because these levers, these arms are not gonna be able to push as hard on this shock, you know, in the, from landing a jump or from this uh, car rolling. So uh, rule number one, kind of straightforward, something you should probably, is sort of intuitively obviously closer it is softer further away stiffer now the second thing i want to talk about is um, basically uh, the shock angle so when you actually mount this shock under the arm and the shock tower um, it's at an angle you know when you're sort of sitting at rest but as you squeeze them as you bring them closer together that angle actually changes it generally becomes more uh, sort of straight across these two points you know in the beginning it might be kind of more uh, laid down but actually, as you compress it, as you bring it closer together, let me see if I can kind of bring it up here. Um, you're gonna, this triangle is sort of becoming a, a, a more uh, symmetrical triangle where this length and, and uh, this sort of straight across angle here is becoming more uh, straight. So in the beginning, it's gonna be kind of laid down, but as it gets together, it's gonna be a little more straight across. And so there's something going on here when that angle changes. So the, the first thing to realize is that the more straight across this, the shock is, across these two points, basically these, these angles here, um, the more effective it's gonna be and the better it's gonna be able to basically push back against that arm. So the spring is gonna be uh, more efficient or more effective. It's going to be able to push back uh, sort of at a firmer rate than it is, you know, if it's at some kind of weird goofy angle. So either really lay down or, or like, you know, sort of almost inverted or something. It's gonna be uh, not as efficient, not as effective, and it's gonna feel a little bit softer. So 
uh, this shock angle will change and it'll always get a little bit stiffer and stiffer as you um, get closer uh, and squeeze these two arms together. Now, the more laid down it is, the less efficient it's gonna be. It's never gonna quite get to that perfect angle uh, to be perfectly uh, pushing back against both of these. It's gonna feel softer initially and then get firmer and firmer. And the more straight up and down it's gonna, it is, it's gonna be more linear. So it's gonna be kind of feel about the same throughout the whole stroke. Um, well, obviously depending on the spring as well, but for the most part, it's gonna have a more linear rate. So there's two simple rules. One, shock location, as it gets closer, softer, as it gets further, stiffer, and then the shock angle or progressiveness, more laid down, the more progressive it's gonna be. It's gonna feel softer initially and then get firmer and firmer. Um, and the more vertical it is, it's gonna just be more linear. It's gonna kind of feel about the same all the way through the stroke and you know, sort of that firm rate all the way through. So. Two simple rules, what does that have to do with the shock mounting locations? Well, if you look at this um, vehicle, you'll notice that uh, moving a shock in or out on a hole is actually gonna affect two things, right? So let's say you've got it mounted middle and middle on the arm, and then you decide to move it in one hole on the shock tire. Well, what you've done is actually two things, right? You've brought it in one hole, so you've actually brought the shock in closer to the fulcrum, and you've made the whole thing a little bit softer, right? If you move it out, you've actually made it a little bit stiffer, right? The, the whole shock's a little bit further away from the fulcrum. But the second thing you've done is you've changed the angle. So moving it in, you've actually laid it down a little bit more, made it a little more progressive. Moving it out, you made it a little more straight up and down, and then a little more linear. So. When you move a hole on a, on a particular shock tower or arm, you're, you're affecting two things. You're affecting both the softness and the progressiveness. And it's kind of hard to separate those two. Even if you do the bottom hole, right? You move it in one hole, well, you've made it a little bit softer because you know the shock's a little bit closer to the fulcrum and you've made it a little more straight up and down, a little more uh, linear. Similarly, if you move it out a hole, you've actually made it stiffer and more progressive, right? So it's kind of hard to make it just stiffer or just progressive, right? Moving a hole is gonna affect both of those things. Now you could sort of get it a little bit softer by moving it in a hole on the top and a hole on the bottom, right? That moves the whole shock in and keeps the angle about the same. Uh, similarly, moving it out one hole on the top and one hole on the bottom, you basically uh, made it uh, stiffer, but also kept the uh, progressiveness about the same. Um, um, so yeah, it, it is possible to kind of get both. You could also move it in one hole on the top and out one hole on the bottom. And that way you haven't really moved the shock in or out, you know, closer or further away from the fulcrum, but you've laid it down a little bit, or you can move it in, you know, on the bottom and out on the top. And then you made it more linear without really bringing it in closer to the actual uh, pivot point. So that would make it a little more linear without changing the stiffness very much. Um, other differences between the top and the bottom is that generally the top holes kind of uh, line up, you know, kind of point at the, the holes on the arm. So that way uh, little changes up top are not going to make um, very big changes to the overall shock performance. You'll make it a little bit softer, a little bit stiffer. You know, the progression is not going to change a whole lot. Um, generally the stiffness changes more than the progressiveness on the top holes. On the bottom holes, these arms kind of go, uh, you know, they're a little flatter, they're a little bit straighter across. So moving the shock in or out a hole actually makes a much bigger change than the holes on the top. Not only does it change the shock angle and sort of the closeness of the shock to the uh, pivot point, but it also affects the droop quite a bit because you're sort of lengthening or shortening this distance, right? You know, from the shock tower to the hole, you know, if you move it in, move it in a hole, you, you, you're dropping the droop quite a bit, or if you're moving it to the outer hole, you're raising the droop in quite a bit and uh, basically not allowing the arm to move down very much. So droop is another topic I'm not gonna talk about here, but just something to be aware of. Generally, when you're moving holes around on the on the arms, you're gonna have to change a spacer inside the shock so that you're not affecting droop too much. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for shocks and kind of explaining what they do and, and what actually moving shocks around. You know, a lot of material says, oh, well, if you move it in, it's softer. If you move it out, it's stiffer. Well, it depends on whether you're talking about the, the arm, you're talking about the shock tower, you're also affecting the, the, 
progressiveness of the shock as you move it around up and down uh, left and right and so um, I thought I'd just kind of clear that up hopefully this video was entertaining useful uh, informative uh, throw down a comment below if you agree or disagree with uh, what I had to say but you know I, th I think that's kind of simplifies it down to kind of the essence of what's going on you know people talk about arms and longitudinal vertical forces and, and different things but it's really just a lever right the arms either moving up to the shock tower the shock tower is either moving down to the arm right if you're willing there's no difference Difference there, right? The, the effect's going to be the same whether you move it in or out. And then the second thing is uh, bringing it in closer makes it softer, bringing it out makes it stiffer. Pretty obvious. And then the last thing, obviously, the progression is depending on the shock angle. So, anyways, that's it. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, and look for more videos soon. Take care, guys.